Well, good afternoon. This is Tim with C&D Farms and uh, here with Allison and we also got the uh, cow. We're at the uh, dairy farm kind of practicing for the dairy show that's coming up uh, in about a month now. So, uh, but stay tuned. Uh, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, if you like our kind of content, uh, please subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button. Uh, today, I'm going to kind of talk to you about uh, a chainsaw that I bought. Uh, it's an Echo and uh, also going to tell you about uh, about three other things that uh, any uh, person that's cutting wood or a hobby farmer, homesteader, really needs for a chainsaw and for a wood operation. So uh, come back and uh, join us for that. And uh, we're gonna go practice uh, walking our cow and halter breaking this cow, getting her ready for the uh, dairy show coming up soon. Talk to you later. Welcome back. This is Tim with C&D Farms. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit of the dairy show uh, we had going on. And uh, what I wanted to do today, and that's kind of the topic of the video, is I wanted to uh, kind of do a review of the Echo CS590. It's the Timberwolf. Uh, you can get them at Home Depot. Uh, you can get them at uh, Do It Best Hardware, a couple of different places, any of your Echo dealers. So, uh, I bought this saw um, about two weeks ago, or right after we had our little bit of an ice storm here. So my steel, and I've always been a steel person. Every saw I've pretty much had has been a steel from my family farm and, and then saws that I had here. But it was having some issues. I think a lot of it was to do with the gas and because uh, it was an older model saw and with the ethanol in the gas. Uh, over the years, it just had some issues. I've gotten it back, had to take it to the shop and get it fixed. But in the meantime, I was looking for more of a uh, a good saw that would uh, kind of budget friendly uh, to the homesteader, to the person that doesn't necessarily cut wood every day. I don't cut wood. We don't burn wood currently. We, we burn it some in emergencies. We do cut some wood, but it's not something that I rely on as my heat source. So... I wanted to kind of economical saw. I've done a lot of reviews on the Echo, and thus far, uh, for me, uh, for a small homeowner, uh, I've been really impressed with it. It's got a lot of power. Uh, my steel is an MS270, which is a little bit smaller than this saw as far as uh, the uh, the engine size, but it's uh, probably one step above the MS270. So to say it's got more power than my steel uh, kind of be a little bit you know unfair because it is a bigger engine. Uh, but I do, did enjoy the saw. Uh, I cut up a lot of the storm damage that I had because mine was in the shop. Uh, so that's kind of the, the, the review of this saw is if you are a homeowner, um, even if you're a professional cutter, you know, this is a kind of a mid-grade saw. I'm not going to say it's a con straight consumer because it does have a compression release. Although I'm not real sure a compression release is needed on this engine size. I didn't have a problem with it, but some people may have an issue cranking a saw of this size without it. But for me, it worked pretty good. So um, that's kind of what I've got I uh, wanted to review. Uh, the other thing I wanted to review is um, some other things that you may need. Uh, one of the things that I have is the, the log ox. So kind of show some examples of that. I'll kind of put that in the video of us using it. Uh, the other thing that I think every... Um, person that uses a saw on a regular basis or even on a homestead is you need to have the safety gear to go with it. Um, one of the things if you'll notice and I'll take them off is uh, I had to wear I wear a pair of cutting chaps so that I put that I keep on my legs anytime I'm cutting. So let me take these off. Um, you may think Dale this is silly we don't need to wear this stuff I'm just cutting a few trees I'm not gonna cut much but here's a set of cutting chaps, all right? So these are designed, if you have some type of kickback on the saw and it comes back and hits your leg, there's fibers inside of these chaps 
that will actually take the saw and just cause it to choke out. It basically jams the chain up and that prevents from cutting your leg. So very important safety tip. Um, most of y'all know that I'm a uh, public safety provider and I can't tell you how many calls we've been on uh, through my years. People were having accidents with chainsaws and even some of our uh, firefighters that get a little complacent sometimes, um, five minutes to put these on and it could save you thousands of dollars or save you a lot of stitches in the ER or a lot of pain and heartache later on in life. So pair cutting chaps, well worth the money. The other thing that I use is a helmet, which some people don't necessarily use a helmet. I bought this as a kit, but I got a helmet with hearing protection. This one also has the shield, keeps kind of the sawdust out of your eyes. You know, very important tools to use uh, when you're cutting. Even when you're just cutting the little bitty stuff, or I just need to cut one tree out of the way, you know, especially here in protection, maybe not the helmet, you know, kind of it's up to you. If you're getting in stuff that's got stuff over your head and may fall, then the helmet's a must. Uh, but definitely use the chaps. Anytime you're cutting with a chainsaw, I don't care how much you cut with it, I would put the chaps on it. So, all right, one of the other tools that I like, uh, and if you're going to be, uh, if you're you know, you're working, uh, you have a homestead, a small uh, weekend, stuff like that, um, is this sharpening tool. I've done a video, you can check out my YouTube channel, where I've done a video on uh, this sharpener. This is an outstanding tool. Uh, I know for me, when I used to sharpen with a file just by myself, you know, I didn't do it all the time. When I did sharpen, sometimes the blade would go to the side, my cuts wouldn't be straight, and that was because I was sharpening one side more than the other. This right here helps you prevent that. Um, so it also sharpens the drags or the rakes on top. So it keeps everything even. It also keeps the right angle. So that's an outstanding tool for the uh, weekend or the uh, occasional uh, woodcutter. So um, what the other thing that I do, and this is just for me, I kind of keep all my chainsaw stuff in a bag. That way I know when it's ready. So I keep both of my saws in. And also now that I'm running with the new saws, you know, I run kind of the, uh, the pre-mixed gas already that, uh, that's non-ethanol. Um, so especially towards the end of the cutting season, if you cut in the wintertime, you know, if you cut a lot, you can mix your gas with what you buy to pump uh, because you're going running it through the saw. But I would definitely not store that gas unless you've got some type of stabilizer. But a lot of the saws now, a lot of the gas now, whether it be the Moto Mix that comes with steel or the Echo Red that comes with Echo. And I use this uh, VP small engine. I buy it at our hardware store. It's a 94 octane, 50 to one. Uh, it's got a stabilizer in it. So if I do have a saw sitting for a long time, you know, it's, it's gonna be ready to go. I usually try to run most of the gas out of the saw before I store it for any long periods of time. So uh, that's kind of the video today. Um, we're kind of reviewing again the Timberwolf or uh, Timberwolf by Echo. It's a CS590. Uh, you can get it at um, any place that sells the Echoes. And, and just so I uh, kind of put this out here, you know, I bought this saw. I'm not getting any kind of sponsorship for any of this stuff. I bought that log ox. Uh, I bought that chain, the sharpener. All of this that I bought, this is a review from somebody that just uses it every day. Uh, to kind of get it out there. So um, we've got, uh, we're going to kind of close going back to the dairy farm, uh, kind of do a little bit of closing on that and kind of finish out with that. But if you enjoy the channel, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button. Uh, you know, that helps us kind of grow this channel. This is new for us. And uh, I also give a little bit of update uh, on the house. It's uh, getting closer, closer than it uh, has been but we're still not quite there yet. And uh, we'll also talk about the uh, new animals that we got uh, in the next video as well. I still haven't showed them, but y'all probably guessed what they are. So uh, check out the closing at the dairy farm and we'll see you at the next video. Here we are back at the farm. I uh, appreciate y'all watching some of the stuff we had on the chainsaws. I know we kind of went from one place to another, but wanted to do the closing here at the, uh, at the dairy farm and uh, we've done some of the uh, chainsaw stuff uh, talked about the chainsaw talked about some of the safety equipment uh, 
you know, I kind of enjoyed uh, running that saw. I've never really, uh, it's the first uh, echo saw that I've had. So, uh, and I talked a little bit about that in the, in the video. So, I um, mm -hmm. wanted to get, just kind of close this video out with, uh, you know, we practice uh, our family. Uh, you know, we don't live, we don't have, we don't uh, live on a farm currently, um, you know, but we're still very active uh, in the agricultural community. And that's our plan. We plan on uh, moving to our homestead. That's what our videos have been all about. That's what we've been trying to do. Um, throughout this year, it's just been a slow, slow process. And uh, hopefully at some point, uh, you know, we'll start. Uh, you know, part of the house update that you, uh, that I've got is, is I hope to be digging a basement in about two to three weeks. Uh, that's the latest from the contractor based on some of the stuff from the, uh, from the banks and from everything that's going on. Sorry, I'm moving around a little bit. But uh, even though we don't necessarily, uh, you know, have that homestead yet with cows, goats, and uh, the chickens, everything that we want to have that we're going to, we're still being an active uh, farmer. Uh, or we're still being active in our agricultural community. Uh, both of my daughters have participated in the livestock shows. We participate in the dairy show. And we're at one of our local dairy farmers uh, that's not too far from our house. And, um, you know, they participate. They're real active uh, in the uh, dairy show uh, in the ag community. So we want to thank them uh, for allowing us to uh, kind of be, uh, be a part of this agricultural industry. Uh, I think it's, you know, becoming a lost breed and a lost art sometimes. And you can argue different ways of agriculture and some people like, you know, completely grass fed. Some people like, uh, you know, uh, different ways. Some people may not like this type of uh, dairy farming. Uh, but this is where our food comes from. This is where uh, what we consume. As long as you get out here and know, sometimes we uh, just do some research, talk to the farmers. It may not as be as may not be as bad as it seems, or it may not be what people portray it to be. So, um, make up your own mind and do your own research. Don't uh, let some news media or some organization uh, sway your opinion one way or the other. They may be right, but you do your own research. So, and I know this farm; they do very well. They have a lot of biosecurity. They have a lot of. Uh, control measures it's a heavily regulated industry so you know i feel safe with it so anyway to our next video uh please join us if you like uh, uh like our content uh hopefully we'll have some stuff on the house coming soon uh you know uh, it's getting closer and closer we're closer now than we've ever been uh although it's not quite as uh fast as i wanted it but the lord he uh He's going to give it to us when he's ready to give it to us. And uh, and he's definitely taught me patience in this process. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, in videos come, we're going to have a, a house starting construction on the house. So until our next video, uh, come back and join us again. And this is Tim and Allison. She's still working with her uh, cow, getting it ready for the uh, show uh, coming to you. So we'll see you at the next video.